Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're going to begin with the cable that has concentrated loads attached to it. So obviously it's not going to be in a perfect parabolic shape. Notice that in this particular cable we have attach point A, we have attach point B, and we have three loads on the cable F1, F2, and F3. In a situation like this, typically the cable will have sections which are essentially straight. Of course, they're not perfectly straight, but straight enough. So we're going to consider these straight sections, all connected to one another. And then we have what we call the connect points to where the loads are attached to the cable. The tensions in each of those sections will be different from one another based upon the angle at which they're situated. Also notice that the distance from attach point A to attach point B in the horizontal direction is considered L, and the distance between attach point A and attach point B in the vertical distance is considered D. Also consider the reaction forces. Since the full weight of the cable, which is typically ignored, and the loads on the cable, it's attached to the attach points here and is therefore carried by those attach points, we will have reactionary forces both at point A and at point B, where the cable is attached. The reaction forces, since we don't know the angle at which the cable will form between the end points and the attach points right here, we need to express the reactionary forces both in terms of the X and the Y components, the X and the Y components. Now typically in textbooks, you'll see the Y components to be in the vertical direction, upward in the positive vertical direction, and you'll see the X coordinates in the positive X direction. That is a bit of a problem sometimes when you look at it, because after all, the full weight of the cable pulls on this attach point and this attach point, so the, the force needs to be upheld in the vertical direction and needs to be held in the horizontal direction. And typically, the real force, A sub X, is pulling to the left against the loads on this cable, and B sub X is pulling to the right against the loads on the cable over here. So I personally prefer to write the A sub X in this direction, knowing that this will be a positive value. At least a positive value, not direction-wise, but a positive value relative to the direction of the arrow. If you draw it like this and you solve for a sub x, you will typically get a negative value, which kind of makes it a little bit confusing. Why do you get a negative value pointing in the positive x direction? And by the way, we know that this is not the direction of the reactionary force. We really know that it's in this direction. So to make things a little simpler, I like to write it like this, but you can do it either way. Also, what we need to understand is that for each attach point, we will have a Y coordinate and an X coordinate, a distance from the highest attach point to the point here that's called Y1, and from the left to there that's called X1. Here's Y2 and X2, Y3 and X3. Now there's some additional things that we should know about a situation like this where a cable has specific loads on it, so what we call concentrated loads. First of all, we know that each section in the entire cable is under tension. So when you go to each of the individual sections, we can see that each section is under tension, which means that the cable pulls on, let's say in this section right here, the cable pulls in this direction. Let me use a different color. So the cable pulls in this direction away from point two, and it pulls in this direction from point three. So relative to the cable, the cable is pulling on these attach points. Relative to the attach points, of course, the attach points are pulling on the cable in the opposite direction. Cables are flexible, which means there's no way that cables can actually be under compression. If you try to compress a cable, it'll get all twisted up. It will not stay in its shape. So cables are made to always be under tension. The weight of the cable in most situations like this is negligible relative to the loads and therefore we simply ignore the weight of the cable. There are situations where we will not do that, especially when we talk about catenaries, but in this case and in most other cases we simply ignore the weight of the cables. Next, the internal forces reduce the net forces along the length of the cable. So there may be all kinds of forces acting on the cable. But when it comes down to finding the net force on the cable, the forces always act in the direction of the cable. And so that will be what we always assume. 
the horizontal component of the tension is always constant in each section. Now that's a very important concept. You can see that the tension acts in the direction of the cable, which means that each tension for each section will have an X and a Y component. The X components of each of the sections in the cable are always equal to one another, and they will be equal to the reactionary force at A and at B in the horizontal direction. But the tensions in the vertical directions are different and they depend upon the steepness of the cable sections. The steeper the cable section, the greater the tension component in the y direction. Because of that, the maximum tension will be found in the cable section that has the steepest angle. For example, this looks like it's the steepest angle. You would expect the maximum tension to be in this section of the cable. Not because of the X component, because the tensions of the X components are all the same, but the tension of the Y component here will be the greatest. Therefore, the maximum tension will be found in this section. Consequently, the section with the smallest amount of tension will be right here because it has the smallest angle relative to the horizontal. So here you can see that the maximum tension is found in the steepest section. And in this particular case, where we have concentrated loads, we'll then Assume that all the forces act at those load points. So we label them P1, P2, and P3, and the endpoints. That's where all the forces will be acting. There's no external forces acting anywhere else on these cable sections. So that's the good start on the understanding of how to deal with concentrated loads on cables. And later on, we'll show you some examples of how to actually calculate the various sections, the tension in each section, the reactionary forces at A and B and so forth. So in the next videos, we'll start with looking at what happens at the load points and what happens at the points in between the load points. So stay tuned and we'll have some good examples for you.